Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the live stream here. Hope everybody can uh, hear me okay and see what's going on here. And if you if there is any issues, just <clears throat> write in the comment field and Georgie at Savage is keeping an eye on that and I have her on the on the on the other line here. So you'll be able to hear me but not her. Uh, but she's gonna help me out with uh, reading questions and stuff like that. So very nice. So today uh, just doodling a little here now but my plan is to draw something uh, an environment go for something that I'm uh, pretty much into these days in case of uh, <clears throat> in case of worn sort of worn down hidden places where nature can sort of grow back a bit so I'm gonna just show you some of my inspiration lately and also some of just my photos that I'm taking and put them into this gather and it might look pretty boring to most people <laughs> but it's uh, but I just love the the way uh, how you sort of see typically this fade from tarmac to gravel to some grass popping up and then you have bigger plants growing out and then eventually trees you have this natural fade from the man-made tarmac to nature and sometimes I think that transition part is really interesting and I love the I love the pot in on the overgrown stuff like I think that's much more interesting than just a slick clean new buildings right so so here's some of my I found an alley the other day in my hometown Moss um and uh i snuck in there and took some pictures and it's uh yeah i love this sort of stuff also just how the the wall is uh broken up into you kind of see how the concrete is working underneath and some places the the topping has sort of fallen off and you get this nice yeah nature growing back and also stuff like this just crap laying around i uh i don't enjoy people putting crap out in the <laughs> in nature like this but i uh, i love how it's just sp like it naturally spread out like this so that's also going to be part of my part of my painting and or drawing today we're going to see how far we can get within about an hour about an hour's time so yeah that's that's my nerdy stuff walking around taking weird photos but it's beautiful look at this also it's spring like in norway it's spring now it's the green is at its most green so it's it's almost it looks fake almost because it's so green this was in Germany. I was in Germany a couple of weeks ago, and yeah, beautiful. Look at this. Ah, summer, spring. Yeah, just love it. J just a random stuff laying about on this table here. I, yeah, that's that's like poetry and art to me. That stuff, and how the grass is just growing back here. Yeah. Yes, I'm weird. I I'm aware. That's how it is. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's jump back into Procreate, yeah. or, or I can continue showing this stuff for hours. But uh, I have some of that stuff just on my Mac beside me, just for inspiration. And most often, I'll I won't sort of just paint exactly what I see but it's more inspiration to how light works or how the plants are so I'm more inspired by when I use reference not really just uh, copying so let's get rid of this guy um, 
and I want to set up my perspective. So that's when I do environments, that's my go to startup. That's uh, uh, that's deciding for uh, the point of view. Where are you putting the camera in the scene? And uh, so for me, it's I I feel more like a cameraman than uh, just a uh, a human <laughs> or watching it through the camera because your canvas is a square. You decide how that square is shaped, but it's still more a camera than how your eyes are working. You're deciding where the the limitations are to your uh, to your canvas. So. And also because I work in film a lot. Yeah, right now my screen. Yeah, I had a little issues lately with the screen not being responsive with from the fingers, but I hope that we won't have too much problem with that during this uh, live stream. Just a few seconds of apathy from the iPad sometimes. This poor overworked iPad. So I'm I'm setting up the three point perspective here, and um, so it's a low angle. Uh, the camera is looking up, so the horizon line comes down in the image, um, and it's a two point perspective, or it's a three point perspective. And the, since you're looking up, which means the horizon line gets low that means the third point is always high so uh, and it's all the third point is also always in the, in the center here and exactly where it is in height here is a bit of something you have to just get used to look at references for that if you're if you have trouble with setting up your perspective I recommend just taking a photo with uh, your iPad for example or your phone uh, at the angle you, you want your painting to be in and just import that and then you match the perspective lines to that photo and then you just delete the photo then you have sort of stolen the perspective from that photo and then you have the same sort of camera point of view and setting from that photo you took so that's a good way of getting used to seeing perspective and also to get to know how these lines and vanishing points are behaving. Alrighty. Uh, and I always make my lines black. Uh, I don't like colors on them. I just want them to be... I fade them out a bit like this and then done. And I hope you can see them. I'm gonna put my background color to neutral gray. That's... This is a typical startup for me most of my images I start like this I may not go like 50% gray maybe a little brighter doesn't really matter but I want to go away from white I don't like starting on the white canvas so here we have one layer um, and I'm starting to paint with a darker color doesn't need to be black but just darker um, here is my uh, quick menu setup so erase straight up paint straight down drawing assist here flip horizontal two of my favorite brushes right here so the round brush looks like this so the harder I press the more opacity it comes in and also uh, the bigger it gets so both uh, it's glazed and uh, both size and opacity is hooked to pressure and then it's the the, the rule which is which look, looks like this so it has some texture to it um, but it becomes massive if i press hard um, and it's also glazed so i can paint over my own lines without going darker if i don't want to so but it doesn't change size uh, the harder i press so these two does a lot of the job, almost all the job, but I, I still, still gonna jump around here through my, some of my favorite brushes here. Um, and 
you can go into my Gumroad if you want and I have plenty of tutorials there and all my brushes that I use in each tutorial follow the tutorial. So most of these are definitely there. Alrighty, so starting up, this is I'm gonna make some um, some building. So it's gonna be like yeah, like a derelict shed or you know some sort of forgotten place here. So I'm just starting off with a, a simple cube cube shape, right? Want to keep it keep it simple in the beginning. So this could be maybe just like an old building, not a gas station necessarily, but maybe something. Maybe they sold like an old shop or something. So putting in like a doorway immediately uh, shows a certain scale, right? Some stuff is just usually about the same size, regardless what kind of building it is. Or So putting in that doorway, immediately you know approximately how big that building is. Because unless it's like a castle and the doorway is like 15 meters high, then it's usually a, a, a bit more than a couple of meters. I'm also going to put in a window here. So Georgie just asked me if I used a screen protector and uh, no, I don't. I really like the, the less friction, the better, like the less strain on when I'm painting. So it's just a pure, pure iPad screen. Um, but I do use a protective on the iPad when I'm not using it. Like uh, I have the Apple keyboard that folds over the screen because I'm scared of uh, messing up the screen. But when I'm using the iPad, it's just the screen on. So no, no protection there. But I understand like some people really like the, the paper papery feel. I know there's a, a good sort of foil or so you can have on your iPad that's called paper like. So that's the only one I know about but I've heard good things about it so yeah so I'm basically here drawing some lines I I'm not really thinking about all the lines that I'm doing. I'm just niddling in some lines here and there just to just to get a feel for it and also to to put just some rat because uh, nature is random and just by putting some random lines here and there you'll you you will strike some luck here and there. I I have a word for this in Norwegian called just the rar, you know, just crap basically I'm painting crap and to get good at crap you need to watch how nature is doing it or like this forgotten places where there's like a there's a tire lying there or an old doll or you know just part of some camping wagon that somebody parked there a long time ago and some animals just tore out the inside of it so it's spread out so that sort of randomness is just it has its own beauty and i'm also playing a bit with the size of the brush here but i'm gonna i'm gonna close this shape at a certain point so i can get like a solid silhouette for it because i that helps me a lot i'm gonna explain that better in a, in a few seconds or minutes and I, I also turn on and off the uh, drawing assist because I love having it on but if I have it on all the time you're gonna lose some of that organic feel and 
especially for a place like this where I, you want those organic lines here and there, you know, even though it's meant to be straight stuff, it's not always the case. And I also keep like the inside the interior I keep clean for now because I want that on maybe just some stuff just standing in the doorway. But I, I'm going to actually save that for maybe just something hanging here. Because I want to have, I'm going to do a selection of this as well. So that's on a separate layer. Let's go look at the time. Quarter past. Because suddenly, swoosh, that was an hour. And I'm like, well, no, I wanted to paint all that stuff. Because it's fun. <laughs> I also want to put in some text here and there. And Georgie, you, you really helped me out on that uh, Asian Harbor walk the dog image with uh, all the Chinese text. That was really cool. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it really works. And it's, um, uh, I've got some several questions like, you know Chinese? Like, no, <laughs> sorry, I got help. But, yeah, uh, but it was really, yeah, I think it, with the text tool, it makes really the, the difference from, makes it look more natural and, and real when you put it in, instead of just faking it like I've done, uh, that looks okay as well, but it looks more real when it's actual stuff, actual text. Hmm. Gonna have some sort of chunk of something here, maybe like a concrete thing standing there, maybe with a pole in it. Maybe there used to be a sign or something. And I keep flipping it, and that is one of the most important things to to do, to flip your image so that you actually get fresh eyes seeing the composition. I also want some sort of... Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, well, thank you. Yeah, G Georgie told me Somebody uh, pointed out that I uh, I didn't have any prints available, but they would look like to buy my prints. I actually gonna I'm gonna do that because um, I am an art station. Art station fairly newly started to have prints available in their thing. Their what they so so that's that's part of my plan. I actually do have prints available, but it they only deliver to certain parts of Europe, so it doesn't. And I I haven't updated it in a very long time. It's called Poster Lounge, Lounge Poster Lounge. So that's. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna actually. That's been my plan for a while to. To get some posters. All right. So <clears throat> this is as far as I'm gonna get on the building for now, and I'm gonna close some. Well, first I'm going to do automatic selection and I'm going to see how that's going to work. So automatic selection and I select the outside. And that actually looks okay. I'm going to select some of that ground and then I invert the selection. And now I'm going to feather it about three because that's going to take that hard edge from your automatic selection. The alternative to that is to not do the feathering, but then to blur it with Gaussian blur uh, about 3% later on. It does basically the same thing.
So I made a new layer now, put it underneath the sketch there, and I'm going to fill it with a slightly brighter value. So I'm going to brighten that up a bit. But as soon as I do that, at least I feel that, ah, there is the building. It's much more solid and, uh, yeah, I can much easier see that chunk of uh, that silhouette. It works better for me this way. Um, and I'm going to select also the, the doorway and the window here. Like this. Doesn't really matter that there's a stripe going through, that's just fine. And I'm gonna do the same feathering. And I'm gonna delete that clear. So now that's just a hole through the building. And I'm gonna make a new layer underneath. And then I paint with a with a darker value. So now it just first like that, then I can alpha lock that, I'll also alpha lock this layer here, and yeah, so that's a startup. I'm also going to clip mask this layer to that one, just missed a little part here just so this sign looks solid okay and I'm also gonna alpha lock the the sketch because alpha lock to me is also like a, a small security thing that I don't paint in paint in that layer by accident um, but now I can start putting in a bit more value in this uh, in this silhouette layer. So just like the the ceiling coming out here, and also deciding like how how low is the light gonna be. And I thought I'm gonna have some sun in this image. I haven't totally decided on what's gonna be hit by the sun and not because I. I thought there will be like a, like the shadow might cover this part here, but I'm gonna paint some more of it first. And uh, to do the ground, one really um, um, cool thing is to you make a new layer, and one of my other favorite brushes here is like this Fury. I have the Fury bushes or the Fury eggs. Eggs is just because it's made out of egg, this top shape there. And they're fairly similar. They're just fairly chaotic. And uh, if I now paint in that new layer, just some random, it's also unglazed. So you see that it's, I can really easily vary the, the pressure both in the opacity and size, and it's very random. I love this chaotic stuff here. If I turn off the other things, it's easier to see. And I also have like a bunch of other, like this is my egg brush set, and it's all made out of eggshells that I took a pic pictures of some time ago. So I'm just spreading out some, this is basically the ground scene from straight above, and I'm painting it like that, and then I'm gonna also erasing with some of these brushes are really uh, effective. And then I'm going to put it into perspective. So just also the negative stuff like the, the white spots that are being erased now. They're really efficient as well, not just uh, so I do sort of both. So I turn on everything else here now and I can also put this at the bottom. And then I scale it down like this. And I put the magnetics on just to widen the bottom part first. Turn the magnetic off, grab the middle bottom line so I can move the whole thing like this. 
Then I I move it up, I touch hold so it I can move the whole thing, and then I just grab and scale. Then you see it's scaling out, and then I can lift it again if I want it to be even more sort of flat to the ground, you know. So that's a, that's a trick I use a lot. So here I can decide, you know, it's almost like the ground is like passing us like this. Uh, and then I can decide if I see more interesting. I like the darker part on the right side, so I'm going to keep it like this. So already it looks more like a detailed ground, even though it's just some random textures. But it, even though uh, the ground doesn't have any like um, man-made lines, it's uh, it's just chaos. Could be in the middle of the forest. Um, it still has perspective, so that's important. <laughs> Just gonna darken my sketch lines a bit. All right, and I'm gonna have a ground plane that I put at the bottom. That I also have some chaos in. So I'm picking a slightly darker tone here. Maybe I'll go for the fury, fury bushes. It's always nice, like a vegetation brush. So that's like plants coming out here, and then also some chaos on this side. Maybe like a bigger, bigger tree on the right side, so we really see that it is. Plenty of vegetation here. Nice balance to the big building chunk. And also good to have like a brush that is uh, like this, the ink one. It's exactly the same brush as a round brush. But this one is only, it's like it's just a round shape connected to size and not not uh, opacity. So just putting in some tree, like young tree trunks here. That also helps to show that where the third point goes to. So it's important to follow that, your vertical lines. And now I need to add some more. Uh, Gonna use this one to just tap around a bit to get some of that foliage on these trees as well. Okay, and then I'm gonna just cover the ground with it. So it covers everything <clears throat> and leaves a sort of like a hole behind the where the trees are here. This is my grassy one of my grassy brush brushes. But just so the ground is solid I can then alpha lock or you know just brighten it up here. Not always, it's not like a rule to me, but for me it's much easier to concentrate on the composition to begin with. And then I can... Because uh, I, I, I still haven't taken almost any decision in case of light yet, just composition. Um, and also not worrying about color just yet, but it's, it's about that time now that it's... Uh, to start thinking about the colors. So, um, but but not always. I, if you check out my bamboo flute tutorial, I started starting color on that one. So I encourage to do both. You know, not just. Uh, I think doing both is better than just doing one. In any, in any case, also like with drawing characters, for example, that you draw also from 
like an outline, like a drawn, like a drawing, more, and then also to try to build it up just with silhouette, for example, to do both. So I recommend that. I'm gonna start to introduce some color here now. Um, let me see, and then we're gonna get some more grass, a lot of more foliage also in the foreground, and also to figure out the light in this scene. And I also want to use the text tool to get some nice text here and there. Maybe you can help me out, out with suggestions of what the text should say on these different parts here. So this is also alpha look, the background. I'm going to just tone down the, just with the round brush, just going darkening the trees there a bit so it doesn't look like they're really far away and then brighten the the ground a bit and I think we need one more background layer here just to just to really say that this is the some more trees and forests out there and then we can have a uh, some of, some of that sky ab above, but it's mainly nature back there, like this. All right, alpha lock. Two fingers slide to the right on the layer. I'm gonna s just do a little what I call ambient occlusion, that's sort of like a 3D expression, but the soft shadows that always occur that makes stuff look a bit more like 3D, like three dimensional, not CG, but it gets this nice, this important soft shading that always happens naturally. It's a good start and it's a, uh, the expression ambient occlusion I also use a lot when I'm teaching about this because it's uh, it's not really a good other term for it but it helps a lot to to give a more realistic look also gonna do a little of that on the, the foliage layer back there so I would say if if I can only have three brushes, it would be the round brush, the rull, and the airbrush. These three are the three musketeers. You can do anything with these three brushes, pretty much. I'm just gonna give a shadow on that sign because it's hanging away from us. Alrighty. Oh yeah, I drag up and I let go. So I, but I, I'm used to it. So it goes like this. Shoop. You can hardly see the menu pop up. So it, when you get used to the quick menu, you're gonna love it. That, that is a stroke of genius. I, yeah, that's one of the things I, I love the hardest about Procreate, the quick menu. Okay, colors, colors. So what I usually do when uh, oh, time is running, what I usually do is I, I introduce color through uh, curves first. So, uh, I'm going to start with the sky first because that's just a background. We might we might use um, a layer for that later, but just for now I'm just going to put in like a nice bright blue sky color. Um, and then I usually go for the biggest chunk uh, first to to pick the color on that. So in this case, it's the big building here. 
So I open curves and uh, I want to give that just like a base color, like the like if it was all colorless in a way, or you know the the main color of that building. So I'm introducing some of that red in the darker areas. And it's basically just to get away from gray, right? Just to give it like how you can test out some stuff here, but uh, the curves is really powerful. I'm going to go like that for now. Not not like a blast of color yet, but I, you know, starting out sort of a bit calm. And then the ground. I want that to be also a nice um uh, complementary thing going on here with uh, the green and sort of the more red in the in the mud and I can do that like this in a way just because it's brighter control of the brighter part and the darker part but I'm also going to help out with uh, painting over this with colors later this is just the beginning you know just to push it into some sort of color. Yeah. So the ground one. something like that so at least now it is color and then I go for I make a new layer sometimes I take the, the outline the sketch I did and I put it into overlay mode because um, I might merge this um, after a little while here I like to have uh, as clean um, layer stack as possible. If it doesn't need to be separate layers, I merge it. But I hook on, I clip mask a new layer on, I put that into color mode. Because now I'm going to paint some um, local colors on that store or building. Just going to introduce some red to it. Uh, 3D, uh, George is asking me. In. Um, George is asking me if I put my images into 3D like I've done uh, not really no um, I, I've <laughs> this must be weird listening to because you don't hear what George is saying um, I, I do I use Luma Fusion and then I put stuff into maybe I can just quickly show you guys because Luma Fusion uh, um, is an editing app, and uh, so let me see here a recent file. This one? No. Hmm. Let me see if I can find it here instead. Albums. Didn't I do that here? No, I did that on my little uh, 
Wait, give me half a second here. Because I, I just bought the iPad mini just to have like a, a backup iPad as well. The newest one to draw on. And I did some stuff there. Um, let me just quickly airdrop that to my other iPad. And I, if you if you can't afford an iPad Pro and you just want a little ninja sketchbook you can bring anywhere, this this new iPad Mini is fantastic. Love it. I brought it on a vacation recently, and uh, you can do pretty much anything on that. It's just a little smaller, so. This is what I did in case of just a test, just to have uh, some layers that I kind of 3D. It's very slow, but you know, just to get that parallax, 3D parallax, you can do stuff like this in uh, Luma Fusion. So that's sort of as far as my 3D stuff goes. In, uh, but I guess that's not what you meant, uh, Georgie. I know you can get this sort of that you move the phone around and then it looks like 3D. Is that yeah, yeah? No, I haven't I haven't tried it yet, but I I love to breathe some light life into the into the paintings, right? So I really wish that it was possible to you know push put all these and like you to choose your camera movements and stuff, and you can do that with. 3D software, right? But uh, is there a special app that's where you can do that, or yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, George is trying to find the name of this app. Uh, it is fun. It is fun to like. I think being able to put your three D, or your two D drawing, into three D somehow. I think it's the, the best of both worlds. Isn't this? Uh... So I'm as you see. I'm just skiddling in some color here and there. I'm not sure if skiddling is a word, but just trying to be playful with it. You know, not not really uh, paying too much attention to my brush strokes, just introducing some random colors here and there just to give it some life and uh, yeah, make it come to life. And it's, it's still kind of, you know, it's still fairly early stage. I'm probably going to want to come further on this than I'm probably going to end up doing, but so I'm going to have to work fast. And we're going to push, push in some, uh, ask for some help from some cool ass layer modes. I got to merge this boom. So there you have the whole building thing on one layer. It's always a nice feeling when they merge. I can get rid of that outline, which I usually end up doing anyway. Skiddling, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. It could be like a. I also, when you say said it said skiddling now, like Georgie says that people think it's okay. It also sounds like somebody's trying to walk away, pretending not they're doing. I'm just gonna skittle this direction, like from a dangerous situation, pretending they're not walking away, but they're actually walking away. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the inside of the building. I'm just gonna get that, give that some color as well, but really subtle. I want it to be. Just so, some dark tones, some random stuff. Maybe it's some trash laying about there as well. It's it's the kind of place where you, you discover as a kid and you dare your friend to go in there. Because 
it's always some sort of granny that's gonna eat you if you do you know some dangerous place but it's fun it's fun to discover these sort of cool places so just giving that some well i haven't really started on the grass yet um i was asked what brush i used for the grass i use uh, i'm gonna use several brushes i have a separate grass brush that's pretty i'm gonna just put some blue in that window because that kind of mimicking the reflection and i'm going to use my selection tool to select because i want that window to be like kind of broken so i'm making like a broken part here and then i'm painting in black so it looks more broken and maybe some charts here doesn't need to be really fancy but yeah just gonna break two of them um and i want to go into curves again so now i introduce some color to that and uh, i'm gonna do curves again also for the pushing the both the 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 lighter tones and the darker tones just to get that see if i can add some more contrast or i don't want to push it too far because i want to add the sun as the next thing it's going to be like a what's it called when like a sh like a shaft of sun do you say that like if the sun goes between two buildings it creates this sort of path Yeah, my English vocabulary is with limits. Uh, so, yeah, maybe something like this. So, preview, a bit more, a bit darker, a bit more saturated colors. So, let's introduce the sunlight. And... Uh, the ground here yeah I'm gonna do some curves here as well just to get a bit more greeny something like this I think it fits better together now just gonna brighten that sky a bit maybe just to Get that contrast going a bit more. <clears throat> All right, I'm just gonna see if the if it should be a bit more desaturated. Maybe a little. It's nice to play with this hue saturation brightness as well. Curves together with hue saturation brightness, they are a powerful team. All right, um, sun. So, um, new layer, add mode. Just gonna move the microphone a little. Uh, and I'm gonna pick a, like a nice warm tone. Add mode is super powerful, it's the brightest mode you have in case of light so you don't have to go too bright on your color and you paint then it's going to go super bright anyway right so i'm going to paint this light coming in on the side here hitting this building and i actually might uh, I'm gonna put this on clipping masks and stuff so it's not gonna hit everything like this. But it's really, it's like the sunlight suddenly turned on here, right? Um, so just this nice evening sun coming in there. 
and it is pretty cool to have that in a separate layer like this as well and you can really decide where it's gonna go where it's not gonna go and once you've painted that um, you can still use the hue saturation brightness to to adjust it like do you want it to be more green do you want it to be less saturated more saturated darker so I I always just slap it in there and then I try to find the best like exactly what I it was fairly good actually I'm not gonna do too much just gonna keep it like it was actually I think it was pretty pretty okay tad more green just a just a little so now we have that color I'm gonna go to normal mode now just to pick that color because it's slightly different and then I'm gonna undo so I go back to add mode and I clip mask that to to this part so this part is gonna get its separate um, Oh, I'm on the wrong layer now. And, uh, yeah, something like that. Bless you, Georgie. You're okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this is the the part of the sun that's going to hit the, the building and i also want to going to show you a little trick here if you want to have like a i kind of wanted to have like a natural like the trees are blocking part of that sun like especially up on top there if i just take this this layer and I duplicate that and I'm just gonna push that up here and I'm gonna unlock it because it, if you move it it's automatically gonna go on alpha no one clip mask um, and I'm just gonna move that to where this just focus on the top part of the roofing thing there this is gonna sh shadow in to the to the sun but it's gonna be blurred because on that distance you get blurry more blurry shadows just gonna push that a bit in the direction of where the light is coming from and maybe some Gaussian blur as well maybe a bit too much on the motion blur First Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, motion blur. It's fairly similar words, right? Maybe something like that. And then I select this, turn that off, and I just clear. So you get this nice little, it looks like the sun is coming through that. That's a way of cheating, cheating it a bit. And I want the same, so I have that color still picked. I can delete that now. And I go to the ground layer. Let me just, I'll just merge this uh, gravel stuff here. I'm just gonna check how it looks on overlay mode. It looks better. I'm just gonna hue saturation play with it a little. Like that. And I'm going to merge these two, so that's one layer now. And I want the same layer in add mode. So we also can add some sun to, to the... Ah, I need to have my brush, not the eraser. That's going to help. So something like this. Uh, 
I still feel we are missing a lot of vegetation here. So I'm going to have to work fast to get some of that in. Why isn't this working? What happened to my brush? Mm. It's just really, yeah, what happened? I'm just going to put my Apple pencil. I think it just lost the connection or something. We're gonna get, we're gonna get them all now. The bugs. Does it work now? No. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, it just says Apple Pencil. I'm gonna turn off the. Oh, there we go. Apple Pencil. Eighty-two percent. Yeah. I'm going to have a talk with this Apple Pencil after this. You don't do that in the middle of a... Yeah, sorry about that. Little technical issues, but if they can be solved in a few seconds, I'm okay with it. So I'm just erasing a bit into that as well, that sun, just to... And then motion blurring it. Something like that, and also here, gonna get some of that sort of vegetation shapes also into the shadow of that building. And I'm also gonna blur that a little so that it looks like it should. And then the make sure that the shadow on the building on top there is sharper so that the stuff that's further away that can cast some more soft shadows but the close stuff that should be sharper sharper shadows and also this thing here it's gonna be nice to play with Make that pop. Yep. That's eight. Uh, ah, that's one hour up already. But. Yeah, okay. I can keep going. Cool. Just going to smudge that a little. Getting slightly brighter here. So I'm so picking color. And uh, now I want to start coloring on, well, first of all, let me just, uh, just fix the light on, because the, the sunlight should also hit that window here a bit more like this. Just wanted a bit sort of whiter on that window. Um, and also on the glass, because this is an old building that's been... Haven't seen a, a cleanup for a while, so it's also important to kind of give that impression, like a dusty glass as well. So I kind of have to pick the bright part, because the rest is... A hole through the window like this on that layer and then I'm gonna curves but maybe give it a bit more sort of a yellowy dusty look maybe something like this
paint that shadow also, so it's actually also hitting the glass. And the trees way behind there, they're gonna help us with the direction of the sun. Just to show that where that sun is hitting these trees behind here, maybe a bit more saturated. Also some of that vegetation sticking up, so it's a, like a higher grassy field back there. Maybe even go a bit brighter for the some of that ground stuff. There we go. And on this layer above it, I also want to have some of that but I go a bit more green and I'm a bit more careful on where I put it. Maybe I'm gonna use a different brush here. Stripe X. Just to make some of those nice leaves pop out. Just a few of them because these are mostly standing in shadow as well. And then maybe some of that sun hitting the green parts here. But we're going to go in with a new layer on top here. I'm just going to warm up. I'm just going to go with a, it's the same as the airbrush, but in overlay mode. So. If anybody haven't played with going into a brush in blend mode here and actually putting the brush in different blend modes, play with it. And especially overlay, like overlay is super powerful. See what it does inside the room there now? It just warms it right up. It's crazy. I'm going to use that here as well a little. Just to go get give that nice bounce up on the underneath that ceiling. Ah, I almost forgot text. Let's put some some text here and there before we do the vegetation stuff. So, what are we gonna write, Georgie? I'm just so add add text. Um, don't go in here. Is that too stupid or maybe like this? Don't go in here. Yeah, sorry, boring. But uh, the important part is to show the text tool. So I'm just going to colorize that. And I am going to, you know, you see here, if I transform it, I can scale and I can rotate and I can still go in and edit that text, right? But if I... Um, I just rotate it back. If I do this, if I distort it, whoopee, like that, then you have rasterized it. So just be aware. But we are going to rasterize. I um, guess we're going to put it into perspective. So the only thing I would folk like make sure your your texts blocks are bigger than what you're going to scale them down to before you rasterize them. So if they were this small and you're going to scale them up, then you're going to lose detail. But as long as they're big, don't go in here. <laughs> okay, we can't flip too much now because now the text reveals which is the right side. Okay, so that's one. I'm going to alpha lock that and I'm going to add 
no, not photo, insert, add text. So here we can have, uh, okay, uh, help. <laughs> what can I write? My brain is in drawing mode, not in trying to, yeah. Okay, let me see here. Um, Shack. Is it called like that? I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Come on, guys, help me out with the. But here you can go in and get your fun. Beware the dog, that's cool. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna show that. Uh, is there one with a bit more bold? Oh, this is too. Come on. This one bold. Yeah. It'll have to do. And you can, you know, you can make the letters far apart like this. Kerning? Kerning. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Kerning? Kerning. We're gonna kern this text today. Be aware, kerning in progress. And then we're gonna smack the. Ah! Finally, somebody with wits. Shack. If I call it Procreate Shack, will that be too sort of dirty? Since procreate already means something. Um, well, I'm gonna have. Uh, which font is procreate? Is it a normal one, or do you have like a special, special one? Yeah, probably is. Okay, if I. Um, oh, that's not even words. Text. Um, yeah, copper plate. Then we write. Sorry, it's the wrong. Right here, let's just go for that one. Bold. Dam, Dam Damascus, Damascus, and then we uh, we write pro create. We're probably not gonna have the whole word since I'm gonna put it. That's not too far from the procreate font. Or somebody's probably gonna. You can also press rasterize right here. I, um, I must say that. I don't. I have very little clue about fonts and graphic design. That is not one of my strengths. But here. So we know that it's a procreate building. Okay, so that's at least I'm I'm merging all the text here because we can alpha lock that and then we can uh, like let's say we want to red letters. Maybe more more red. There we go. And now we can do a sassy thing because the light here, maybe I'll I'll paint it first so it's in shadow. And then I will click select here and then I go back to that layer and I pick the bright one. Do I paint in where it's light? Hmm? Neat trick because I already have that where the light is hitting and not. Shack, oh, wrong layer. Is this something? Nothing yet. Hmm. So maybe just brighten the letters a bit here. Don't go in there. You'll be eaten. 
it should say go in there you're not gonna be eaten because then granny's gonna get her lunch procreate lunch okay so at least some text there i might put in some more later but i want to get some uh, green stuff happening in here um so i put a new layer on top on the total top and uh yeah just clip mask the sun on the ground to the ground um so in that top layer so that's just a normal layer in normal mode so that opens up for me to do anything here like details so i'm gonna probably gonna do like a mid ground and uh just to get in some stuff here and there you know also vegetation eventually but also to have some the clearer shapes here and there if it's grass or not not grass a paper or just the rubbish laying about here also to pop out and be more visible like a garbage or just a regular painting layer on top of everything so just to tidy or to more to tie stuff together better because the transitions between the still sketchy part and uh, the other parts here still needed um, a good transition also with the grass like if I pick another more grassy brush here that's gonna help a lot it's gonna and you can like now I'm painting it from through the ground sort of you know and then I can just erase the bottom part so I can choose where they're sticking up from uh, the other way to do is is to just select with with a free hand just select where you want the grass to grow up from and then you just do a big selection above like this and just paint up from that it's a little trick and we can also we can either add some of those brighter grass strands here that's gonna that's gonna help us show that the sun is hitting some of these things here it's already helping I haven't looked once at my reference on the side here, but it's comforting to have it there just to I get so immersed in my painting, so I very often forget about everything else. Even the time, especially the time, maybe. So both darker and brighter grass and you can also have other type brushes like the bleed leaves that's a nice one I can it's very it's very binary it's either not painting or it is painting so it's very you have to be like there's no opacity adjustment on that brush but it's nice for these more leaves that you want to pop wants to pop a bit more yeah. it's getting there Let me see here. 
Most of these brushes are actually from my brush tutorial. That's why it's called Toot Brushes. Um, not all of them though. There, I added. I've added a few more. I, uh, yes. Uh, I'll probably add that to a tutorial as well. Um, I haven't, right? Like as of now, I haven't uh, sold brushes separate, but uh, but I I might already have it in one of my tutorials. Um, if not, I recommend the brush tutorial because then you also learn how to make your own tutorial uh, brushes. Yeah, because then you get the power. But uh, yeah, my my plan also Procreate is gonna have that that you can sell stuff on their forum, right? Pretty soon. George, Georgie, do you know anything about that or uh, Procreate plans to so you can sell stuff on their forums, like. Uh, No. It's um yeah, resources. I should I should put some brushes in there. But then you can add stuff, can you? Like add the uh, stuff like brushes there? Or Yeah. Haven't been in there for a while. I lost track of what's possible or not there. Yeah, no, I. I don't know anything. So, whatever I say is just me guessing. Uh, don't mind. Just a. Uh, just hopes, you know, from a from a guy who wants to put stuff there. <laughs> okay, but I, yeah, it's it's starting to. I'm I'm gonna have a separate layer on the like total foreground. That's gonna sort of set the camera more where we want it. This is not the grass brush though. This is a this is a stripe brush, and that's definitely in in several of my tutorials. So it's a bit more chunky. You get more grass, like uh, like in one stroke, you get a bit more thick uh, stuff. With the grass one, you get more the the thin ones, which you basically can also just paint with a round brush uh, a strand at a time, you know. So that's also a good brush to just put those hero grass strands in there. So this is just a round brush. Yeah, you know, I like my uh, my previous talk was on thumbnails, right? So it, I wouldn't say this is a total thumbnail still, but I've I haven't really gone too much closer than this. But I yeah, that this is when stuff starts breaking apart, right? When I zoom in too much, but. Um, the less time you have, the smaller keep it smaller <laughs> um, yeah I, I like that's maybe also why I really like the the new uh, iPad mini also it really works for me because I, I don't I can paint small that's fine but 
you know, I would go in here in detail because if this were supposed to be a, a fully painted thing that I finished to, to bring up to my uh, my sort of finished detail level, I probably need another day or two, like full two full work days on it. And that's almost all details. But as you can see, you can get fairly far in one hour, 20 minutes. Uh, and I would, I would, if this was a real job, I would definitely show it much earlier to the client, like on the grayscale level, like, is this the, is this the point of view you want? Is this all right? Or do you want me to change something? And then I'm just gonna, because this is my paint on top layer, I'm gonna also paint on the building. Just to get some of that uh, detail also on that building. Maybe some of these construction things that are helping us uh, kind of point towards the the building vanishing point lines <clears throat> oh I know another text thing now just have to flip it so add There we go. That's an important one. Um, and we can have that because I just figured out that I, I need something on this little sign here. And why not? Sorry, that's my humor, especially half past 11 at night here in Norway. <clears throat> but I feel I'm on a roll. I can go on for hours. You know, tomorrow or in a half hour in Norway, it's the National Norway uh, Day, uh, Norway's National Day. The 17th of May, the birthday of Norway. That's when uh, the Swedes finally gave us up and we got our own got our own laws or uh, our own country. So we're gonna celebrate tomorrow. So I can't make it too late but I'm also having a lot of fun here. So I want to put in some more trying to pick color. Out in the street, yes. A costume, no. Um yeah, I keep forgetting that you only hear what I say and not Georgie. Uh she asked if or somebody asked me if I'm gonna be in the street in, in a costume um, yes I'm gonna be the running target uh, dressed in a bunny suit as always no no uh, we are going out in the streets and and the the parades are almost are almost too much here in Norway like we are like Norway Norway we're we're the best country everybody has a flag and it's it's, it's almost a bit too much but it's a very nice day. It's a beautiful time of year and everybody's happy. Like we're, we're very lucky if the weather is anything like uh, today, we are gonna 
have the most perfect day. It was like 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, we had almost 30 on our porch or uh, terrace. Uh, what's that called again? Porch? Balcony? No. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, what's the what's the weather like in Tasmania? Yeah, fifteen degrees. So fifteen degrees or colder. Yeah, I Yeah, we are we are going in separate direction in case of weather now, huh? Let me do a foreground. So the paint layer now, you see, it's an important layer. Um, gonna do a new layer here with a really dark foreground. Just to have a nice placement of the camera uh, ink brush. So these are small bushes here. Gonna add some leaves to them as well. See how this leaf brush has not too bad. I don't want I don't want to cover up too much here, so that's sort of the trick to maybe smaller leaves. Not cover up everything I just painted, but uh, also going to push this a bit more out of focus. This really places the camera in the scene when you do a foreground like this. Then you then you sort of get more of the feeling that the camera was just placed on the ground almost. So it might be too much, but it always helps to to first paint some of that stuff and then maybe also go for a little grass it's a nice foreground grass yeah sorry about the mix-up yesterday I <laughs> I thought it was today and uh, Georgie thought it was yesterday so we had a little half hour before uh, <laughs> I was supposed to go on. <clears throat> I got a message from Georgie and uh, I panicked. <laughs> Isn't that tomorrow? I was I was sure it was tomorrow. And I didn't even have the software installed. Ah, she got me awake, that's for sure. Uh yeah, something like that maybe. And then Let's just warp this a little because we don't need all that. I also love the warp tool. The warp tool and uh, the liquify. It's just. Whew. Just help you so much. Like you can re redo your image in so many ways with that. Just want maybe something like this. And then put it even darker. 
black or maybe not black black and then I want to erase a couple of these things hmm not totally happy with that that's better All we miss now is uh, mm -hmm. I'm going back to my painting layer. I can lock the alpha here. Just want also some of that bounce underneath. Joji, is there a way of when I'm doing a selection and when I get too close to the first point, you know, if I'm going to do a square, if I go just a little, if I go over here and down and then click too close to that square, it's going to close it, right? Is there is there a way of adjusting how close you can get to close the shape? Exactly. Yep. Yep. If you want to make a small square, you just zoom in and then you can do that. Yeah. The selection tool is awesome for, because you, sometimes you really want like a sharp, nice sharp edge on something. But you might want to use like a huge brush and just, you know, to give that playful surface. And with with that selection tool, it gives you that freedom. Maybe even like, a, like the wolf's neck brush, also one of my favorites. Yeah, that's my, that's my best wolf. Uh, no, sorry, my best... Uh, brush name I ever came up with a wolf's neck but it's because it's it kind of looks like a wolf's neck like uh, the the fur of a wolf's neck in a way yeah so that's as that's as poetic as I get a brush name but that's in many of my tutorials this one here Joji, could you put a link into my uh, Gumroad on this video? Is that, is that okay? Ah, perfect, thank you. Alrighty. I think now. Yeah? Yeah, the egg stuff, I, I, I love that actually. It's, it's a very, it's a good brush, uh, or it's a good brush set. It has almost everything. Like you could, you could get by with this. You see that I've already copied in my airbrush rule and not the round, but the egg. So it's actually a, in a shape of an egg. It's a. You even see the number of the egg on the thing there. So it's a, uh, yeah. That's a complete set right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in a new layer here now between the foreground and the rest of the image. Uh, and I want to put this in overlay mode. I can actually put it on top here. Because now it's fairly finished. I'm not going to go too much further than this. Uh, it's still going to be like a sketch, but a colored one with some details. Um, so with the airbrush now, uh, in overlay layer mode, I can go both darker and brighter. So let's say at the lower part, I want to go 
I want to go there. Like if you go perfect gray here, 50% gray, then you'll get nothing if you paint, because that's sort of the neutral of um, overlay. If you go brighter, it goes brighter. If you go darker, it goes darker, but with more contrast. And if you go with color, you're gonna have that added as well. So if I want to have a more bluish shadow closer to us, I wanna go darker than neutral and more blue so you see at the bottom there now it's more of this bluer. Maybe I can go even more saturated. It's a bit green in it because it's plusing with the warm color underneath. So maybe I have to go a bit more towards purple. So there you have more of that blue in the shadow area. And then I can go, like if I pick this warm, bright color, you see that that really, it's too much though. I have to go maybe here, you know, if I want to sort of warm up something, maybe even more red. If I want to really push that saturation in the reds here. But maybe some of that brighter stuff happening. On the ground here, some bounds also coming up from that. Yeah, so I'm just adjusting here and there where I kind of feel that it's nice to maybe it's a little darker in the top left corner. So just adjusting the image here and there where I think it needs a little, a little help. And um, yeah, just gonna turn off the perspective. It was very subtle, but it was still underneath. And another, another layer I'd like to do. So now you see with and without, it almost works like a vignette, this layer, to kind of close off the corners a bit. Also gonna go a little, a little darker here. The nice saturation, it's almost like a burn. Yeah, like that. Um, a new layer. Um, how's my layer, layer limit here? 31, ah, oh, plenty. Mm. What was my plan here? Yeah, to do same airbrush, but I'm gonna put this in, let's, let's start with screen mode, just to put in some like pollen, pollenish, uh, hazy stuff, but that's actually, that should go here. So my foreground is still, what happens if I do this? Nothing, yeah. I'm going to keep my foreground on top so that I can put stuff in between. See if I paint here now, you see that the foreground actually pops out. So that's what I want. Not going to go that super bright, but just to, if this was a movie scene, they would have this smoke um, location, they always smoke. That's why movies looks like movies, because they put smoke on set. And here is this nice summer evening. You definitely have some of that 
pollen in the ear. Ear, ear. Do you pronounce air and ear? <laughs> What's up? Georgie, how do you pronounce the the things on the side of your head which you're listening with? That's one ear, one ear. And breathe, what are you breathing? Air, air. So ear, <laughs> ear and ear, ear, ear and ear. Okay, yeah. Okay. That's another word the other day that I was like, is that exactly the same word? I keep forgetting what that was. Yeah, so here, a bit more atmosphere on that. A bit more movie. Movie stuff. Another layer mode I really like is uh, Lighten gives it more that sort of postcard feel like it's it does something unnatural to it but it sim it kind of simplifies your your darks in a way and i kind of like it as well it does sort of the same job but without brightening your whole image like this And once I've seen it like this, it's hard to go away from the. But you see inside the building, you see it just simplifies everything in there. Everything that's darker is just eaten up by this haze. I kind of like that. I was going to keep it like this. But I might go in with some brighter tones because I to tie the, the ground together with the grass there. It's nice. Picking some more saturated red. Yeah, feels like summer here, right? Some red up there as well. Yeah. I think that's it. What do you think, uh, Georgie? Is it, is it okay? Yeah? preview yeah just brightening the trees back there a bit just wondering if I nah just seeing if they should should have a different look but they're actually I'm gonna reset that Alrighty. Okay, but uh, any any last questions, Georgie, on your end? Yeah, I have a ghost tutorial that I've been working on for a long time, and uh, it's been probably the one of my drawings that I have had to fight to sort of uh, to make it look like I uh, want I'm not sure if I should show it or not because I'm not very happy with how it looks right now no I, I'm not gonna do that but um, yeah but it is a go like inspired by the the geisha ghost painting that I did uh, but yeah yeah but um, so that's one tutorial that I started on um, but I've already done the tutorial that I started on after that that I already finished uh, the thumbnail one so it might be 
and I have several others in in plan so yeah I cannot uh, be totally uh, yeah that's pretty much all I can say there will be more tutorials that's that's I can promise and uh, I also want to be I already been more active on YouTube and stuff and I want to continue with that to be more on the especially YouTube and and tutorials and stuff so yeah more more to come I'm gonna do one last thing uh, pollen so more dots um, pollen so they call it corner spot this is one of my corner spot brushes to add some of the debris pollen dots in the air in the air 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 no air in the air <laughs> People are gonna think I'm crazy because I'm. They they only hear me, not you. Trying to teach me how to say it. Yeah, next time George is gonna also be on the line here, so you're not gonna just think I'm mental, which I am. But it's not only that; it's also. So, uh, screen, no. should I blur that just a tad, a little, slightly blurred. Yep. Okay. That's it, folks. Hope you liked it. And, um, uh, see you again soon on the next live paint then with Georgie on the line as well <laughs> yes okay goodbye